This one is hot off the press from just this morning. I unsuccessfully run paid campaigns on Start Playing, and decided to run a free one-shot to try to drum up some interest. Last week, I had on a 15-year-old kid who fell asleep in the middle of the session. Uh, whatever. Fine. He rejoined for today's game. That's where it begins. I had four players who signed up. One guy was actually present and ready, absolute legend. One decided, 20 minutes from start time, that he didn't have the time to play. Next one remembered that he had a friend's drag queen birthday party and also dropped. How the fluck you forget that, I don't know. Then, kid. Yesterday, I guided him through character creation. Spotted a mysterious wand I never authorized on his sheet and removed it. Told him how rolling for hit points works, how to assign stats, the ground floor of player character creation. It's fine. I build this as beginner friendly. Today he shows up, can't upload his sheet from D&D Beyond, he didn't enter the URL correctly, but whatever. Again, fine. Then he drops the bomb. He's at a relative's house, and that he'll be playing from the bathroom for at least the first hour. Then from inside a car until he gets home after that. Flucking what? Yes, I'd love to hear Grandpa banging on the door so he can take a fetch while you kiss Grandma goodbye while I'm trying to run a free game on a site people are supposed to be paying for. Flux sake, session canceled. Next week I'll try again. Who knows? Maybe I'll be back with another story. Some people have qualms about paid games. But you know what? After running some myself, you tend to get people who actually want to be there, especially since they have to pay for it. At least that way, you don't have to listen to a dysfunctional old couple in the background, have an argument right in the middle of your big bad evil guy's dramatic monologue. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to The Crow's Perch, where each week, I delve into the fetid pits of the Swamp Gods, otherwise known as Reddit to dig up terrible stories about my favorite hobby, tabletop role-playing games. Do I derive pleasure from this pain? Or am I simply so numbed that any feeling at all would be a welcome break from the humdrum of daily life, slowly ebbing away my hopes and creativity until all that's left of me is a shell begging the question of how the hell did I let it get this far? What was I talking about? Oh yeah, uh, RPG horror stories. Anyway, so did you ever tell anyone you like playing D&D to get into their pants? Be honest. Well, first off, I'm flattered, but I'm sorry, I don't like you that way. But don't be embarrassed, everyone's done something stupid in the pursuit of SMASH. And most people are respectful or self-aware enough to quit when the target of their affection isn't interested. Most people. Unfortunately for today's poster, user Ultimate Serenity, this player doesn't take no for an answer. But just as a heads up for anyone looking to click away, no content warning, because luckily, it doesn't come to that point. Which, mind you, is a low flocking bar for the kinds of people we've seen on this channel, but I digress. So without further ado, Let's gather up a murder and dive into this story. This is certainly not one of the most horrific ones, as I know there's way worse stuff in here. But we recently booted a problem player, so I thought I'd share my tale. Cast. DM. Cleric. Me. Paladin. Problem player. And Warlock. Played another paladin first, but they died. Ranger. Barbarian. Rest of the group. All very good players, and we remain friends. Like all stories, the red flag started at session one. I had never played with either paladin or ranger, but they were known to all the others. So they had to be amazing players. And I was right about ranger. But oh boy, so wrong about Paladin. We start the campaign. 
get to know each other. All is well. We meet Paladin, and they're a satyr, with big horns and no pants, to accommodate their goat legs. In small talk, they let out the first joke about how they're horny. Alright. Cringe is cringe, but bad jokes never killed anyone. We all just kinda awkwardly laugh it off, and follow the plot threads. In my head, I just imagine they might be playing a paladin, but maybe they're awkward in real life. Who knows? Later, in post-session talk, I bring it up how Paladin's name is different in Roll20 and Discord, and DM tells me it's because they wanted his character's name's initials to form a certain word. And yes, it was a certain body part. Yeah. It rhymes with Venus, no. Cock. Cock. It's cock. It's in English. A few sessions go by with Warlock's character dying to get us out of a pinch. My cleric and the paladin discover they work really well together, and even that our backstories touch on the same central point of the Feywild. On post-session, I am over the moon. This is a character I put a lot of effort in the backstory, so having another character that can effortlessly bring that to light is nothing short of awesome to me. I'm new to role-playing and TTRPGs in general, so I really feel like stressing how happy I was. They then ask for my permission for Paladin to start making moves on my cleric. I, for the same reason I was happy, am now very nervous, and I explain that I really don't want to deal with romance with my PCs right now, but maybe later, when I was more confident. Granted. Paladin had connection issues sometimes, but for me, the air was dead silent for a good minute until we logged off. Make of that what you will. We get to a big city, and in downtime talk, it comes out that my cleric, a small town religious girl, never really went out for fun, backstory reasons. They proposed we go on a, and I quote, debauchery night. Barbarian wants in on the booze bonanza, and Paladin expects me to accept. My cleric is not stupid. She knows what that means. And I even joke in character about how these city folk have some really weird customs. Refusing. But Paladin is not proposing anymore. They say, paraphrasing to the best of my memory, Again, I am not forcing you, but you should really go. I go for in-character again, saying something about how I don't really like drinking, but Paladin doesn't think so. If you get drunk, I can just lay on hands to make you not drunk. And mainly just repeats themselves. I'm stunned for a few seconds, as is Barbarian, but at this point, this is not role-playing anymore. We're just stalling the session down to a crawl. Since I knew the DM from before, I knew they played it loose on roleplaying, but would absolutely stop anything too weird. So I just bit the bullet, and accepted the... invite. Saying they would probably need a responsible, sober person in the room. Paladin reiterates how they are A-OK -okay with putting their hands on an intoxicated girl and casting body state altering magic. What do you mean by that? And I just ignore it and move on at this point. I should have said in post session that it made me uncomfortable, but you know what they say about hindsight. Some more plot rolls around, but eventually my dreaded debauchery session comes. Paladin says we're essentially gonna pub crawl, and my girl is fine with that. They then take the entire party to the city's, uh, night ladies lounge. The DM can tell that no one's feeling this. So instead of a full-blown, um, lovemaking house, they make it into more like a Japanese hostess bar with, uh, benefits. You can talk and drink with them, and light touches, but nothing too much. Otherwise, you gotta pay for the higher service, and fade to black. Which worked wonders for me, since my one no-go is graphic sexual content. No one really wanted to go there, 
except for Paladin. Warlock hid the location of it. Ranger denied ever being there. Barbarian's disappointed, because this looks like a sort of classy bar, so no cheap ale. We arrive there, get a table, and a hostess NPC starts talking to us, all perfectly normal. The hostess even starts trying to calm down my cleric, who was overheating. It was pretty fun. When Paladin tells me I can order whoever I want, and wants to know who is my type, I play into the overheat, saying pretty much cleric.exe stopped working. And nicely, the party managed to defuse that topic and distract them with something else. I recover and order a single cup of tea, following Ranger's lead, who is giving no shits and pretty much has one foot at the door at all times. Paladin hears me ordering and tries to push me into drinking alcohol but again, is diffused by the party. Half an hour later or something, a miracle. Paladin's connection fails bad, and we all just take the opportunity to pay the tab and just leave. We start a proper pub crawl and find some other places throughout the city before finding a place that had some shopkeeper NPC seated and stand by them. Our luck wasn't long lived, and Paladin is back before long. At this point, my character was much more relaxed, being around people she knew and trusted, so she eventually decided to try some wine. You know the drill by now, right? <sighs> Again, I get asked by Paladin about my tastes in people. At this point, I already drank some wine. So, DM asked me to roll a table of alcohol-induced bad decisions, patent pending, and I roll something about hugging someone. I choose the safe way out, hugging the barbarian, who is a bunny, not a harangan, an actual rabbit. I can only guess that didn't sit well with them, because they proceeded to again press the same old issue. At this point, I was getting annoyed, but was still trying to solve it in character, slurring my words and pretending I didn't understand. Warlock finally put an end to this bullshit, saying in polite but no uncertain terms, my character was in no shape to go around looking for a date. The abrupt cut seemed to hit home, and Paladin finally left me alone, but not before looking for a couple in the bar described as being a sort of homey family place, and nonchalantly offering to, uh, partake in three-way intercourse. <laughs> oh hey, Mr. Paladin, we saw you from across the bar, and we dig your look. <laughs> roll for swingers. <laughs> they got a persuasion roll, but rolled badly, and DM immediately tells them that the couple is very much not interested. Later, in post-session chat, Paladin doesn't stay, and Warlock apologizes for interrupting, but I say it was fine. After that session, my cleric got some nice role-playing in, with everyone else in the party, with an all-girls spa day and a clothes shopping trip, and that really helped flesh her character out and have some nice growth, which is important because of my subsequent call of retiring her. Warlock chose to retire their character, and I felt like it was a good time to do the same. So, everyone knew we both would be rocking new faces come next session. This matters. We had a sort of private last session, with pretty much everyone but Paladin, as they were busy. And she had a nice goodbye, as did Warlock's character. Next session comes around. Before DM even starts setting the scene, Paladin asks if they met my new character yet. My new character. Not Warlock's, mine. Quick reminder that Warlock's change was the expected one. Mine was on a whim. We quickly answer no. My cleric says a final goodbye and leaves for good. The session progresses. We meet new and revamped Warlock. Paladin barely bats an eye. After an hour or so, they get to meet my new character. 
but Paladin was out of the call for connection reasons. When they're back, guess what is their first priority? Is it A. Making sure everyone is okay and up from the fight used as a plot device by DM? B. Making sure the, as far as they know, NPC is okay and safe, given they're supposed to be a paladin for a good-natured goddess? Or C. Desperately trying to find out what the new character looks like. Take your pick now. Shouldn't be too hard. I wish I had imagined the bored, uninterested, disappointed sigh that followed. When DM reads my description of my new character, who is a guy? Eventually, we did kick Paladin, but it was mostly for other stuff, like telling Ranger how to build their character. After I made it public that my cleric would be retiring, it sparked up a conversation of who should take up the mantle of the healer. There was a level up around the corner, so they nonchalantly suggested that they should take up a second level of Ranger for the spellcasting, and be the party's dedicated healer. No amounts of Ranger telling them that that's not how they wanted to play their character was enough. Playing D&D like it's Skyrim. Our campaign is a tense, morally complex, dark fantasy. We would try and make plans, but every time, they would play them down. A nice quote is from when we were planning to kidnap a highly guarded mare, and most of the party was taken hostage, save from Ranger and Paladin. Ranger was trying to work together and make a plan to dodge this full TPK. And Paladin says, We swoop down and just mop them up. They would frequently either not care about consequences or downplay them to infinity. Metagaming. Warlock had little imps as helpers and kept them a secret from other characters. Paladin would just randomly fire Divine Sense to try and find the imps they did not know about in character. They also had the gall to say, I never met a game, interrupting touching moments with main character syndrome. Barbarian had to not show up a few sessions because they were doing some medical stuff. So the DM made this really nice rescue mission based on their backstory resulting in a really cool character moment when my cleric used command to make the barbarian stop and spare a fleeing NPC who didn't want to fight anymore. When back, safe and sound, barbarian gives cleric a hug as thanks for stopping them. Paladin thinks this is a great moment to loudly come out of their room and jokingly demand a hug too, even bringing up the fact that barbarian was close to warlock's first character uh, you know, the one that died in in-game week ago, and we were all very much still feeling it. The moment was ruined, and they kinda just moved along, dragging the both of us down to eat with him or whatever. I'm still pissed for Barbarian. Also, the fact that Ranger full-on said that if a TPK happened and Paladin was going to make a new character, they'd drop out of the campaign. Yeah. I don't bring any big bad breakups full of trauma and tension, but I do bring whatever this garbage behavior is. We've since found a bunch of promising new players, so hopefully I'll never have another story for this sub. Edit. Some comments are about how the DM dropped the ball and whatnot. I agree, and the DM agrees too. In the post-session talk, DM said that Warlock beat them to it, but they were about to cut it out. Also, when I said that everyone used the connection issue to get the hell out of there, I also meant DM. In our discussion for the final decision to kick Paladin, we talked about the session, and DM revealed that they prepared stuff like this because Paladin wanted to visit them, as they did with the rest of the characters as well. My cleric got a full questline related to her temple and whatnot. I did leave out some stuff for the sake of brevity, as I still wanted sleep tonight. But DM's side of this situation was cleaned up. They're a great DM, and I fully intend to continue playing with them. The pub crawl session was sort of a beach episode, before the DM dropped a bunch of important decisions on us story-wise. So it was requested by all of us. My uncomfy feelings were towards Paladin, and them alone. 
for hijacking what should have been a fun night out, full of bonding roleplay between party members, and making it into the awkward mess it was. Also, the alcohol table was already in use way before this session and these incidents. It's kind of a house rule. They do include a hug and a drunken confession of love, but they never really amount to anything. Just goofs and shenanigans. And everyone, me included, thinks they're fun. To user ultimate serenity, you are right in that this could have definitely been way worse. But I'm glad you kicked him out before it even got to that point. I've seen way too many horror stories where behavior like this just goes either ignored or allowed to fester. Despite all of the players seeming to be on the same page about getting rid of the problem player, my conclusion, I think inexperience is the only factor that prevented this guy from getting booted earlier. But overall, you guys made the right call. As for the paladin himself, no means no. They told you numerous times that they weren't interested in a relationship between your characters. And it was incredibly obvious that you were looking for the same thing out of game, especially judging by your reaction when they played a new character. Just because you see someone cute at the table doesn't mean they're into you, bro. When a waitress smiles at you when you order a Grand Slam at Denny's, do you assume it's because she's craving your almighty cock? cock. Or that maybe she's just trying to be polite? Look, dude, all I'm saying is that if you want to keep seeing the local hot singles in your area show up in your D&D game, this kind of behavior is going to make sure that they stay miles away. You have no Riz, you have no Maidens, your princess is not in this or in any other castle. Get him out of my sight, he belongs to the dungeon. But for the rest of you, thank you for listening to today's stories. Enjoy today's stories? Then please consider hitting the like button on this video. Want to see more of them? Then consider hitting the subscribe button and ring a ding dinging that bell so that you have notifications on. And if you made it this far, then leave a comment for the algorithm. Can't think of a comment? Then leave the comment, no maidens? So I know you made it to the end of today's video. Want to support the channel even further? Get early uploads and a role on the Discord channel by hitting the join button, or becoming a patron on Patreon, with roles starting for as little as a dollar a month, so that you can join patrons like our Counts of Quills, like Aaron Kados, Sharkay, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. Or pledge five dollars instead and become a Baron of Beaks. Like Brittany Mars, Rimgrim, Raytheana the Nerd, Sarah Warren, Spectre Spark, Ars Torok, Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Javon Megan, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Moet Ismao, Tech Blog, Corastor, Cardespawn, Jester King, Lord Rend, Wormy, Den of the Drake, McHeatley, and Onya. Dial it up to $10 and become a Duke of Feathers, like Craycard, Hexblading, Kive Mind, The School Bus, Mirage Vaxus, Quinn, Blues Otters, Jared Semlin, Doc Salty 96, Matthew Moquini, and Acroth. And for our Art of the Week this week, I'd like to thank Queen Civ uh, for, for this. Here, let me set the mood for it. Suffering from big balls. Bottom. Text. I, 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 I hate you. And, and I hate this. Please make more of it. And I'll see you all next time, as the crow flies.